All right, guys, today in this video, we're going to do some revision on for your SPM mathematics. And this will be the popular questions from form one to form three that come out in SPM. So this is just a quick revision for you guys. Let's go through together. So the first one is inequalities. Solve this. So why don't you pause and try yourself first before I go through with you? Okay, I hope you managed to get it. Let's do it together. So this one, the first thing we always do is, let me copy down everything again. The first thing you do is get rid of the denominator if there is any. This is the same with any equation as well. When we are solving equations, get rid of the denominator it makes life easy. So we have two here. How do we get rid of this two? You multiply the whole inequality with the denominator. So once, because once 9 over m over 2, we multiply this with 2, then we eliminate the 2. That's the logic behind this. Now, another thing is, a lot of students that I know in school, you learn how to do construction, not mathematics. You will be moving this here, move this there, move this to the left, move this to the right. Please understand the operations that you're performing. Do mathematical operations. Do maths. Don't do construction, right? You can do construction later if you're interested. Not in your maths paper. So we multiply with 2, then you get 8m minus 6. Everything multiplied by 2. 4m, negative 3. On this side, everything we're multiplying by 2 as well. So once 9 over m over 2, uh, 9m over 2, we multiply by 2, we, left, we are left with 9m. Okay, what's the next operation? So we want to solve this inequality. So we want m as the subject. So therefore, we should collect the m on the left side. So what you will do, move the 9m to the left. No, get rid of the 9m on the right by mathematical operation. You minus 9m. And so we minus 9m. We have to do the same thing on both sides, right? So this will become negative m minus 6, which is more than 14. 9m minus 9m is 0. Right, now we have to get rid of the negative 6. Once again, we don't move it to the right and it magically becomes positive. No such thing. So what you do is you plus 6 to get rid of it. You have to do the same thing on both sides. So therefore, negative m is more than 20. Okay, now this is where the problem with inequality starts. With inequalities, how do we get... We don't want negative m. We want just positive m, right? So what do you need to do? Now, this is where you really need to understand your mathematic operations. So what we need to do is you either multiply by negative 1 or divide by negative 1. So negative m will become positive m. So the whole thing we need to multiply with negative 1. Okay, so here starts the problem. Whenever we multiply or divide by a negative number, what must happen is the sign, the inequality sign must change direction. Only when you multiply or divide with a negative number. When you add or subtract a number, positive or negative, it doesn't matter. But when you multiply or divide by a negative number, then you must change the sign. So this becomes m is less than negative 20. This is the answer. I hope you got that. If you have any questions, you can ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of you. Now let's go to the next question. Okay, so the other one is scale drawing. So this can come out in your paper one. Uh, I've seen it come out a few times. So determine the scale used for the diagrams below um, in the form 1 to n. So scale is always in the form of 1 to n. So once again, why don't you pause the video and try this yourself first? All right, so let's try. So the formula for scale drawing will be, the scale is actually, you have to take the drawing size, the length of side of any, any of the side of the drawing, over the object, the actual length of the object. So this is the general formula. So let's take a side. So let's say I want to choose this side. So this is 9 cm. So this is 9. And this over here, the corresponding side on the object is 3. So 9 over 3. So my ratio here, the scale here will be 9 to 3. I can simplify this to 3 to 1. However, this is not the way to write scale. Scale must be in the form 1 to n. So how do we make it 1 to n? Of course, this is a ratio. So what we can do is we can divide both because we want this to be 1. right? We want the 3 to be 1. So we divide by 3. So both you divide by 3. Both, uh, both digits you divide by 3. So we will get 1 to 1 over 3. And this is the answer. 
So this ratio is a ratio of the drawing to the object. So if the value here, the value of n is smaller than one, is less than this value here. What does this mean? So remember, once again, this is ratio of drawing to object. That means the object is smaller. As we can see from this example, the object is smaller than the drawing and will be less than one. Now, what if the object is bigger? So if the object is bigger than this value here, so for example, let me give you another example. So let's say the object, uh, let's say the drawing, okay, let's say the drawing was uh, one centimeter and one centimeter. And then the uh, object was actually uh, four centimeters. Okay, so what would be the scale now? The scale would be, so it's drawing to object, right? It's drawing to object. So drawing is actually one, one, two, four. So you can see if the object is bigger, n will be greater than one. If the object is smaller, n will be less than one. All right, okay. So go on to the next question. So this is your tangents in your circle. Um, find the value of x plus y. Why don't you pause and try first? Okay, so let's try this question. Now, this one, you can see we have a circle and this one I've labeled it as tangent. So we have a tangent to a circle. The tangent is touching the vertex of a triangle. And this triangle is inside the circle where all the vertices are touching the circumference of the circle. Now, in this case, all right, we have a special relationship for the angles here. So y is actually the same angle on the opposite side here. This is y. This is y. Okay. So on the opposite side, meaning from here, outside, outside the triangle to the tangent. From outside the triangle to the tangent here. This will be the same as the opposite side here. Okay, now it's the same for x as well. So if you're looking at x, this x angle will be here. This is also x. So this is the relationship. You have to remember this. For triangles inside a circle where all the vertices are touching the circumference and one of the vertices is also touching the tangent. Okay, so what is the value of x plus y then? So you can see here, we can use this portion, right? What we have from here, we have a straight line, which means x plus y plus 75 must equals to 180 degrees because it's a straight line. Therefore, x plus y is equals to 180 minus 75, which will be 105. So some a mistake that students normally make is you try to find x and y separately. Now for these objective questions especially, it's not necessary. It may not be necessary to find it separately. You may need to find them together. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now let's go to the next one. Number four. All right. Mr. Jamal's credit card. So this is a consumer. The last, uh, not the last, chapter three, in form three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So Mr. Jamal's credit card statement shows an outstanding balance of 180 ringgit credit card statement. Outstanding balance is 180 ringgit. Okay, what is the minimum payment to be paid by Mr. Jama? Once again, why don't you pause and try first? All right, so you need to know that the minimum payment, you need to memorize minimum payment is either 5% or 50 ringgit, whichever is more. 5% or 50 ringgit, whichever is greater. So let's check what's 5% of 180 ringgit first. 5%, let me use a different color. Okay, 5% of 180 ringgit is, 10% oh, is 18, so 5% would be 9 ringgit. All right. So 9 ringgit is less than 50 ringgit. This is less than 50 ringgit, which means, the minimum payment, therefore, minimum payment will be the minimum payment will be whichever is higher, which is 50 ringgit. This is how we do it. All right.
Okay, let's go on to the next question. Okay, so this is also another very popular topic that they like to ask in SPM. This is about regu regular polygons, so internal angles, total internal angles and internal angles. Now, I just want you to be aware of the formulas that are provided to you so you don't make a mistake unnecessarily. So the formula for the total internal angle is given in the formula list, all right? And that is this. I would recommend that you remember it anyway, all right? Just in case you forget, please refer to the formula list. So this is n minus two times 180. So don't forget, this is for total internal angle, everything together, internal angle, for a regular polygon or a polygon that is not a regular polygon as well. This can be used for both, okay? This can be used for both. Now, for the individual, how do we get the individual internal angle? That one, you need to divide by n. But this formula now, when you divide by n, is only going to work for a regular polygon because only a regular polygon has all equal angles. So you can divide by the number of sides equally. All right? if, it's a, if it's not a regular polygon, we can't do that. But you can still calculate the total internal angle using this formula. I hope that clears things up. Why don't you pause and try this first? Okay, now let's take a look at this. So how do we find? So let's read the question first. The diagram below shows a regular hexagon. PQRSTU. So you can see we have six sides here, regular hexagon. And a part of another regular polygon. This PJS is the part of the other polygon. Find the number of sides of this polygon. Find the number of sides for the polygon that has PJS. Okay. So how do we find the number of sides? In order to find the number of sides, actually what we need to do is we need to find this angle, this internal angle here. Because once you know the internal angle, then you can find the number of sides. All right. So that's one. Okay. So what do we do then? How do we find this X? So we have to look at this this pentagon. This is not a regular pentagon. Yeah, this is not a regular pentagon, but it is a pentagon nonetheless because it has five sides. So first thing we need to find is this and this. Now you notice that this will be the internal angle of the hexagon, right? This is the internal angle of the regular hexagon. All right, how do we find the internal angle of the regular hexagon? So let's try, use this formula. So the uh, let's call this uh, y. Okay, how do I find y? Very simple, y will be equals to uh, hex hexagon has six sides. So six minus two times 180. Now this will be the total internal angle for the hexagon, but I only want the single one internal angle. So I divide by the number of sides, divide by six, divided by six. So this will give you, 120. So why is 120 degrees? So we have 120 and 120 here. Let's table that 120 and 120 degrees. Okay. So you would notice that since this side and this side are the same length, let me get rid of this first. All right. So since this side and this side are the same length, this would also, and this and these are the same. Okay. So actually this is also 80 degrees. Right, now we can find x. So x will be equals to, okay, let me do it at the bottom here. x is equals to, all right, so what is the total internal angle for the pentagon? Because now I'm going to use the total internal angle for the pentagon and subtract all the other angles. That's how we get x, right? So total internal angle for a pentagon, since, it's, since it has five sides, that would be 5 minus 2 times 180. So I'm not looking for individual internal angle. I'm looking for the whole thing. So I'm going to leave it as that. There's no need to divide by 5. 5 minus 2 times 180. And then we subtract 2 times 120. There's two angles here, 120. 1, 2. And then 80, we have 2 as well. So subtract 2 times 80. And you will get the value for x. The value for x is 140. So you can do this in your calculator. The value here is 140. 
Okay. So now we know the internal angle for the new polygon. X is the internal angle for the new polygon. How do we work out how many sides there are? Now, we can use the same formula again. So we know that this is the individual internal angle. So what do we do? That means n minus 2 times 180 divided by the total number of sides of the polygon is 140. So now we just have to work this out. So let's work this out. So this, as always, as I told you in the beginning, get rid of the denominator first. Multiply the whole thing with n. You don't move the n anywhere. No, n is not going to move anywhere. So this is times n. So we get 140 n. And what we are left with here is n minus 2 times 180. So you can work this out. So 140, uh, we can divide by 2, 7. And this is 9. Okay, divide by 2 on both sides. You see, mathematical operation again. Divide by 20 on both sides, actually. That's what we're doing. Okay, so this is 7n. And then multiply into the bracket, expand the bracket, 9n minus 18. So therefore, 2n is 18, and n is 9. Divide by 2 on both sides, and we're done. Okay. Okay, guys, I hope this short revision has helped you, yeah? If it's helped you, please share with your friends. All the best for your exams. Give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.